Can I speak to Mr. Robert Presley? This is him. Hey, um, I'm Douglas. I'm, uh, I'm with Blue Flag Media. I'm wondering if you'd answer some questions about your racing career for a book I'm writing. And this is who? Douglas Kenny. Douglas Kenny. D O you're with what place? Blue Flag Media. Blue Flag Media. Yeah. Would you mind answering some questions for a book we're writing? About racing? Well, I will try to answer a couple of them. Thank you. And they're going to be easy ones, so it's just, you know, they're going to be easy as I can make them. The first question is, when it came to the NASCAR garages, who was your best friend? <laughs> really, you just had a lot of friends. I mean, the camaraderie was everybody got along really great. Now on the track it was a little bit different, but you know, I, I can't just pinpoint one was the best friend of anybody. Yeah, there's a lot of drivers. How did your faith guide you in your career, if you do have a faith? Oh yeah, it was so important in it. Uh, I mean, uh, the greatest thing about our sport during the era I went through it was that we was able to have MRO, the Motor Racing Outreach uh, Ministry with it. And, you know, it made it so much easier for us because we be gone 36, 38 Sunday. It was hard to be at our local church and then with my family with me all the time. It, it was just very good. Yeah. And I don't know if this is true or not, and I, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's just what I've heard. When Michael Waltrip crashed at Bristol in 1990, they said that you were part of it. Is that true or false? Uh, I mean, we was racing together there. I mean, he was behind me, and, you know, the racetrack was coming apart, so... You know, it was the closest, I, I would say I was the closest car to him, nobody ever touched or anything. Ah, so nobody touched, okay. No. Nah. So, when you were briefly on Kevin Harvick's bumper at Chicagoland back in 2001, do you think if you would have gotten under him, you would have won that race? <laughs> you know, uh, We'll never know. I know that uh, when the restart started back at Chicago, that uh, I probably have never drove as hard or has had as much uh, willpower as what I was trying to do that day to, you know, just be able to get there enough to take the air off of him or be able to get inside of him. And he was just so strong in the first three years that we went to Chicago, and that being the very first year, you know, I look back, he was, I, I say that he had a little better car than us, and he was a, you know, young guy at that time racing, and he was very hungry too, but I, I don't think nobody was as hungry as I was that day for a win. Yeah, I really got, as a huge racing fan, I gotta really give you one on that. To be honest, if you're racing against a champion like Kevin Harvick, you know, that's something that, you know, people are gonna remember you for, they say. Yes. But I, I have to give you one on your run because not a lot of people can say that, you know, they had a chance at winning a race like you, you know? Uh, I wish we could have got one, you know, we got the bush wins and the truck wins, but, you know, I always say Chicago was the best finish we had and the closest we ever come to winning. Yeah, I really, yeah, everybody was really impressed with your run. I, that's what I can tell you. And uh, another question I have is, uh... Which is the best Indianapolis 500 you watched in your life? You know, I can sit and say I have never watched the Indy 500. I have watched bits and pieces of it, but has never sat through and watched one. You know, I just always liked A.J. Foy as a young guy as I was growing up. But I've never really been interested in the Indy car side of racing. Oh, you see.
serious? I mean, that is odd, you know. We was just always, you know, I hate say it, just never got interested in dirt racing or modified racing was just strictly, you know, like the stock car in it. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there's been a lot of good finishes. It's kind of hard for me to say which one's my favorite, to be honest. And uh, this is the final question I have. If you ever got another top opportunity to race in Cup, like with Hendrick or Joe Gibbs or Penske, would you take the offer even though you're kind of out of the sport? Uh, if, I mean... 20 years ago or today? Well, you're it, talking about today. Yeah, I'm talking about today. No, absolutely not. I mean, they is, I left Homestead uh, for my last race, and I've helped my son, you know, for uh, 10 years racing, done a little driver coaching, you know, Marcus Ambrose, and then yeah. worked with a couple of other kids and I've never been back on the racetrack since the day I got out that day is, you know, I, I believe I give it my best the whole time. I may not have made some right decisions of which team I should have went to, but I don't regret any of them. I, I had a very good career. I was very happy. And when I quit, I just decided that that was going to be it. And if I was in a, if I was in Jimmy Johnson's car, if he is the best car out there, there's no way I could uh, run with the kids that's out there today. I know that, and I mean that ain't what a lot of people want to hear or what they won't believe. But it comes a day when you know you can't do it no more. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, thank you. The name of the book. Well, the name of the book is Life at the Checkered Line, My Life as a NASCAR Superfan. When will it be out? It'll probably be out sometime in the next decade. Once I get all my interviews with race drivers done, and once I, you know, have followed the sport long enough, I'll publish it. And I think I'll send you a copy for free. Well, I would appreciate that, or let us know where to get one. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Right. Right. I hope I got that on footage.